What's up guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to Meteorology Monday. Over the past few weeks, I've gotten a lot of comments under one of my videos titled the top five best and worst things about being a meteorology major. And these questions were basically asking for advice about becoming a meteorology major or what to do whilst you're a meteorology major and all that fun stuff. So because of those comments and a couple of suggestions for a video like this, today I am filming advice for becoming a meteorology major. So there's kind of two parts to this, so I'm gonna split this up into if you're in high school and if you're already in college deciding on becoming a meteorology major or if you're like a freshman or sophomore in meteorology already. So category number one, my high schoolers. One of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you guys is when you are picking your classes and you're thinking about atmospheric sciences or meteorology potentially for college is take the hard courses while you're still in high school. These are classes like chemistry, physics, calculus, maybe an earth science class, computer science will definitely help you out. Taking these now will give you a great foundation for when you have to take them in college. There's not a lot of ways around taking these in college, so if you already know what you're doing before you get into university, there you go, that'll help out a lot. My second piece of advice is if you are planning on going into atmospheric sciences, especially you seniors, Figure out what part of atmospheric sciences that you want to go into before you get to college. This will come in handy when you're picking a school. As I've mentioned before in a lot of videos, there are a ton of things that you can do with an atmospheric science degree. You can do space weather, you can do climatology, you can do meteorology, you can be on TV, you can do research, you can do snow forecasting, you can do tornado forecasting, you can study ice glaciers in Peru, you can work in Antarctica. There's a ton of different things that you can do with this degree and you need to figure out which part of this interests you the most before you decide on going to a school. Say for example that you wanted to go into severe weather forecasting, but the school that you decided to apply to doesn't have a concentration in severe weather forecasting or any professors who studied this topic at all, then you're not going to get the most out of your education because you're not giving yourself the right tools to learn what you really want to learn. This leads into my third piece of advice, which is pick your school wisely and don't focus on just the name. If you're trying to decide on a school for meteorology, you've probably heard the big names Penn State, Colorado State, Oklahoma University, Florida State University, but don't just pick a school for the name. I know it seems like it would give you like a lot of clout and stuff if you go to the one of these big name schools, but if it doesn't have what you want to do, then there's no point in having Penn State next to your name when you graduate. I, for example, went to the University of North Carolina at Asheville. This is an incredibly small school with about 3,000 students. What they specialize in is undergraduate research. That is something that was major to me because I really wanted to be a research meteorologist. On top of this, one of the professors at UNCA went to Oklahoma University and is really well educated on severe weather, tornadoes, and that kind of forecasting, which is what I wanted to do. So by going to UNCA, I got to do undergraduate research and learn about severe weather, which was the perfect combination for me. I also did get accepted into Oklahoma University, which is the number one school in the country for severe weather forecasting and severe weather in general. You know, Oklahoma being out there in the middle of Tornado Alley. One of the reasons, or the, the major reason, that I did not decide to go to OU is because a lot of the research is focused on the master's and PhD students. So if you're not planning on going for a master's or a PhD and you still want to get research experience, Going to one of those big schools where the upper level students get all the research opportunities is not a great idea. Going to OU would not have given me the opportunity to do all the research that I was able to do at UNCA, as an undergrad of course. So find the school that fits what you want to do best. Disclaimer, this is not me telling you not to go to one of those big schools. If one of those big schools has exactly what you want, dude, go for it. Another thing that a lot of high schoolers point out to me is that in college for atmospheric science, you will be required to do a lot of math. Now, if you're not good at math, you can still be an atmospheric science and or meteorology major. I had a bunch of friends in college who were atmospheric science majors and weren't that great at math and were still able to get their degrees. So 
Don't let that be a deterrent if you really want to be a meteorologist. Some of the ways around this is you can minor in atmospheric sciences or minor in meteorology. That'll cut down on some of the math. You can choose a concentration like broadcast meteorology, which does not require upper level maths like differential equations or partial differential equations. You can pick maybe majoring in earth sciences with a concentration in meteorology, which will focus more on the earth sciences and environmental studies type stuff instead of all the math. And I'm sure there are other options as well. Which leads me to point number five, don't worry. If your heart is 100% set on becoming an atmospheric scientist or a meteorologist or a broadcast meteorologist or a climatologist or whatever it is that you wanna be, you will do fine in this major. The people who end up dropping out of this major are the ones who discover that it's not what they wanted to do. It doesn't matter how hard the classes get or how many times you feel like giving up, if you want to be an atmospheric scientist or meteorologist and you are passionate about this and 100% in this, you will do absolutely 100% fine, I promise you that. Now that's not saying that you don't have to work hard still, it's just that you'll have that motivation underneath to keep going. And your professors will see that and they'll grade you a little bit more leniently because they know that you're really, really, really trying. Going into advice tip number six, I think I touched on this a little bit earlier, but you really need to know what atmospheric sciences is before you decide to major in it. I know we've all been there, you know, the little 10, 11, 12 year old us sitting on that couch watching Twisted being like, I wanna be like Dr. Joe Harding. I wanna be like all these characters chasing tornadoes. That seems so cool. Being an atmospheric science major is not all just like that. If you wanna go to school for that and end up being a severe weather meteorologist like I ended up being, you can totally do that. Just, you have to understand what you're getting into before you get into it, if that makes sense. Life as a meteorology major isn't all broadcast meteorology and storm chasing. And that brings me to advice tip number seven for you guys in high school. Now, I'm talking to all of my fellow perfectionists out there, you know, the ones in high school currently who are very happy with their 4.0 GPA. If you're a perfectionist and you want everything perfect and you're obsessing about your GPA and all of these things, I have a message for you. This is a major where you are not going to feel good enough all of the time. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. There are times where you will be taking a test and you will not finish the test. There will be homeworks that you spend seven, eight, nine hours on and it will still not be right. There will be times where you go to your professors a ton of times and you still can't figure out what you're doing wrong in this one problem. You might feel like you wanna drop out. You might feel like you're not smart anymore. You might feel like you're not good enough just because your grades are not what you are used to them being. This was my case when I was in school. I had a very easy time in a high school. I don't think I have ever felt as not good enough as my first year as an atmospheric science major. And that was something that I had to work on. Fellow perfectionists, you might have to do the same thing. Lean in close now. I have a secret to tell you. Just because these homeworks are really hard, you might not finish some tests, and because you'll spend hours in your professor's office, you know, having to ask for help, or having to ask fellow students for help, you are still smart despite what your GPA or test scores say. You are good enough. You will get through this hard class and or hard year. You will walk across that stage on graduation with your degree in your hand. You got this, okay? I believe in you, people believe in you. Go out and kill it. All right, so that was for my high schoolers. Now for my college already declared atmospheric science majors. My first piece of advice for you guys is to use your professors. Go to their office, become their best friend, you know? Ask them what this means on the homework. Ask them what they mean by this on the test. Get to know your professors and show them that you are willing to put in the work. You will probably see them at conferences and stuff long after you graduated, so establishing a good relationship helps you not only while you're in college, but also afterwards when you're looking for a career and stuff. Number two is probably not a piece of advice that you want to hear, but do not skip class. Okay, this is not a major where you can get away with that. I will tell you that right now. If you skip a class, you will probably miss so much material that you will have hours of catching up to do. And if you have to teach yourself it, instead of having one of the professors teach it where you can ask questions in class and stuff, it is so much harder. So please, for the love of God, stay in class. A lot of the times you will have a ton of homework due every single week and during class, 
at least at my school, we had times where we could ask questions about the homework. So if it was due on Thursday, on Tuesday at the end of class, we would be able to ask questions about the homework. If you miss that, you may miss out on points on your homeworks or learning a new topic. Bouncing off of that, do your homeworks. Not only do you get graded on these and your GPA and everything is based on this, but by not doing your homeworks or slacking off on your homeworks, you're missing out on learning topics. In meteorology, you have to take classes in a certain order because everything builds on each other. If you miss one of the building blocks, you know, your first or second year, then when you come around to it again in all your other classes, you're gonna be the one that doesn't know how to use those equations or whatever. And it's going to be super hard when you have to play catch up and everybody else already knows what they're doing. Does it sound like I'm speaking from experience? <laughs> When you're doing the homeworks and they're really hard, you have to keep in mind, it's not all about the grade. There were so many homeworks that I did not get an A or a B on, and that is perfectly fine. If you are still learning and you are picking up new concepts and stuff, even if you don't master it in time to turn in your homework, you now know that so that for the next homework, you'll be better equipped. You already know how to use those equations, even if you learned it 10 minutes after you turned in the homework instead of right before you turned in the homework. For this major, grades matter, but grades don't matter. I had this one class where I just couldn't pass anything. I didn't understand the concepts in time to turn in the homeworks or in time for the test. By the time the class was over, I understood all the concepts and stuff, but I did not know it in time to turn in the assignments. On each of those assignments, I probably should have gotten an F. What I did not get on those assignments was an F because I went to my professors and showed that I was truly working hard and I was really trying to learn it. And in classes, I would answer questions and show that I had learned the concept. My homeworks were graded a lot more leniently and instead of getting an F, I would get a C or a B. If you are showing your professors that you are putting in the work, I promise you that they will go easy on you, most of them. I had one professor that just didn't care at all. My next piece of advice to you is internships. Intern as much as you can. If you are going for broadcast meteorology, intern somewhere that's not broadcast. If you are going for research meteorology, maybe try interning as a broadcast meteorologist. There are so many things that you can learn from different areas of meteorology. You may discover halfway through, I don't wanna be a broadcast meteorologist, I like research too much. Why don't I do this? Or why am I doing research when I could be like climatology or a forecaster? So. You never know what you like completely until you give it a try. Say you wanted to be a broadcast meteorologist, you start interning at a news station and you discover that you hate being in front of a camera. Interning gives you a unique opportunity to be able to test out the career path that you wanna go into before you're done graduating. This way, if you decide that you don't like what you're going to school for, you can switch. Tip number five is, Make friends in your major. I am saving you a boatload of troubles right here. I know some of the people in your classes might seem a little weird, might be a little too nerdy for you, but give them a chance, okay? And I promise you not everybody in your class is really nerdy and hooked on equations and does math in their spare time, probably are actually, we probably are. You can have friends in other majors. I'm sure 90% of your friends will be from other majors, but there's something about sitting down with like-minded individuals who know the struggles of integrating the relative vorticity equation to find a safe track for your ship around a tropical cyclone in the Eastern Pacific. There's just, there's, yeah, your psychology friends don't know what you're talking about, okay? And they're gonna like eyes glaze over, you know the look, you know the look, okay? The eyes glaze over, they zone out completely, they don't wanna have anything to do with your conversation, okay? Your meteorology friends will, okay? You, they will. Also, your meteorology friends might know how to do the homeworks that you don't know, so. Use your resources. Tip number six is save all of your notebooks and textbooks. Like I was saying earlier, everything in meteorology builds on each other. So if you keep your textbooks and your notes close by from your previous classes, you will have those to reference when you come up to a hard question and you're like sitting in the middle of your synoptic class and you're like, oh my gosh, I do not remember this one kinematic equation and I don't have my notes here. I do have my notes here. And you flip open the book and there's the kinematic equation right there. 
and then you can solve your synoptic homework, you know? And finally, number seven. This is a piece of advice for my girls out there. Girls, you are going into a major, or you are already in a major, where 90% of your class is probably not female. Most of the meteorology community is made up of guys. Do not let anyone tease you, mock you, make you feel stupid, grade you differently just because you're a girl. Don't let them try to tell you that you're in the wrong major and that girls cannot be in a science field or a math field. That is absolute garbage. You will most likely be dealing with other students and professors who look down on you because you are a female in a science field. I am going to tell you right now that girls can 100% be in a science field, okay? Girl, you can be a meteorologist. Girl, you can be a climatologist. You wanna do research instead of standing in front of a green screen? That's great. You wanna stand in front of a green screen instead of doing math? That's great too. You can do whatever part of meteorology that you wanna do and don't let anybody tell you that you're not a real scientist or that you're stupid and that you don't belong here just because of your gender. And you know what? Show them who's boss. Show them that you're a wicked smart girl in science and work hard and do the best that you can on these homeworks. Ace those tests or don't ace those tests like I did and still, you know, show your heart and your passion for this field. Do your absolute best and you know, at graduation day, you can wave your degree in their faces and be like, what's up? I got my degree anyways, and I didn't need your insults. Okay, rant is over. With all that being said, those were my advice tips for you guys in high school and in college. Hopefully this helps some of you guys decide whether you wanna go into meteorology or it helps encourage you who are already in meteorology when you're having a rough day. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss videos like this every Monday. If you know someone who would benefit from watching this video, please share it with them. I was fortunate enough to grow up with a dad who was in meteorology, so I had all of my questions about meteorology and atmospheric science answered pretty easily by just asking him, but I know that is not the case for a lot of you, probably most of you out there. So I love answering your questions and helping you guys out. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try my very, very best to answer all of them for you. As always, all of our social medias are linked in that description if you wanna check out our weather adventures over on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, I'm Kayla, thanks for watching and happy meteorology student day.